What's up, chaps and chapheads? Welcome back to another episode of A Triad's Road to Glory. So we're starting a sort of mini-series within the Triad's Road to Glory, which is going to be covering loads of different managers. And to be fair, like, you can comment down below, like, what manager you want to see next. And it's just something that I like to do, because let's be real, like, this game is kind of low-key trash, and we're trying to make it interesting. And one of the things that I do really like is, is real-life tactics. So we're starting off with Simeone here, uh, using a 4-4-2. We've got two tactics set up. We've got defensive and not ultra defensive when you're sitting ever so cozy, man. So we're starting off with the defensive. You've just seen the tactics there. Uh, going into the player instructions, the, the kind of basic emphasis of it is, is that Perisic is going to be that kind of target man, almost like Diego Costa. And then you've got Mertens, who's going to be kind of like Griezmann running in behind. I like to have that in a 4-14. You know, when you've got the two strikers, you want kind of a balance of strength. Well, I mean, Perisic is relatively strong, but he's... I think he's good enough to be a target man. And then obviously super pace with Mertens. Although they are basically both 99 pace. You've got two blocks of four, which is very important for the defensive line. Um, the midfield, the left mid and right mid are going to be getting back. Basically creating 2v1s sometimes against wingers uh, trying to break down. But it's all, especially in the ultra defensive segment. It's all about being very compact in the middle, trying to make it a compact space between your, your midfield four and your defensive four, which basically just isn't going to allow any space for the attacking side. It's one of the reasons why you see that Atletico Madrid have such a good defensive record, and that is kind of the main emphasis of this video, is kind of the defensive tactical side as well as the strategies going into it i've literally been um looking at like tactical analysis videos man i'm literally getting the the notes going doing the theory doing the revision you know we're doing the most but nonetheless the tactics as well for this just a little bit different of the instructions for the ultra defensive it's just kind of stay back while attacking on the left back and right back rather than balanced and then um a couple extra things which are just a bit more kind of defensively suited i think also yes yeah, savage is balanced balanced when he's playing in the defensive tactic and then in the ultra defensive tactic we have him on stay back while attacking just to sit all the way back because savage is kind of one of those players that we like to to bring him forward at times like he's very good defensively but we like to bring him forward as well so he's just getting the ball out to the left back here he's trying to spread the defense not bad players but we're just very once again like i say compact in the middle like stopping the threat in its tracks and we're looking to get away that quick counter attack because he's committed a lot of players forward Lozano comes off the bench he just creates a massive impact we whip it in into the mixer heads it away falls for Allen we spot the space for Savage and he lets fly we're one no up we're living we're laughing and Edison's just not going to be able to save that at this point we're going to ultra defensive and we want to be just trying to trying to see it out, to be honest. But we're still trying to go at him on the counter-attack. It's not literally just everyone sit back and we boot it forward all the time. It's very much a case of, um, you know, we sit back, we try and go for the opportunity. Maybe hold the ball a bit more as well, you know. Um, I do typically play quite a possession-style play, uh, which isn't necessarily that much like Atletico Madrid, which is why I'm, I'm thinking with this, I'm kind of... I'm mainly emulating the defensive and strategical kind of um, positioning that Simeone would go for. In terms of the attacking play, it probably isn't exact, to be honest, just because I do prefer kind of more possession style of play. Well, it seems to work pretty well for me. I mean, we're 2 up at this point as Perisic gets that penalty and sticks it away. Bang. Easy clap. And I mean, the thing is, is that as well, just comparing this to the 4-5-1, the Guardiola strats, I think, would work incredibly well, but we can't, like, emulate it completely because the, the formation isn't the exact kind of formation that Guardiola uses in real life, whereas this formation is pretty much exactly there for Simeone. So we're able to get kind of an easier transition of real life to the actual game with this. So yeah, it's, it's basically... I, I feel like it works better, to be honest, just because it is... Almost exactly how it is in real life. Mate, that goal, I'm sorry, but that is just disgusting. Like, that's just typical FIFA. And we're going to see it again in FIFA 20. Like, let's not get delusional about it. I don't know what just happened there. Um, and I think, you know, there's an EA representative just walking in my door now, just trying to give me a, a whole story about what's just going on there. And uh, he's speechless, to be honest. I mean, it's just it's just a broken game head to toe. Um, but nonetheless, we're one no up at this point. We're taking that. Either way, shake, shaking his hand right now because at the end of the day, he's just giving me a free goal. Uh, Bold ADL 
trying to get something going here. He's actually holding me up quite nicely, but we've got Savic in the middle. You know, like I say, very compact in that midfield block just in front of the defense. And, you know, people are going to start getting frustrated. You know, this is when the controllers start to go. It's kind of like... It's kind of like sprinting or running, you know. You can get an injury when it starts to go wrong. Um, when you overdo it. And that's the same on FIFA, man. Like, these guys are literally ripping their controller. Luckily, my controller's actually still intact. I've been through many a controller, though. And uh, it only seems to be this game where controllers go. Is that coincidence? I don't think so. To be honest, like, when you really think about it, comment down below, actually, if you're still watching a video right now, of course. But, like, what game makes you, makes you rage the most? What game gets you going like fires you up type thing because to be honest i feel like out of all the games i've played this is this game has given me the most rage but also some of the most joy like from playing foot champs and like doing really well back in the day fifa 17 mate that was a that was a banging time what a time to be alive but yeah no we're storming through the games and this is what we like to see we like to see a 4 one 2 one 2 the reason being is we are playing that very compact system in the midfield and if he's just going to go through the middle you know Best, best of luck to him, to be honest, because that's where all of our players are. That's where all of our players are stacked up, um, living and laughing, to be honest with you. And, I mean, especially if I was to go into ultra-defensive, where the depth is just a little bit deeper. You know, you sit off them a bit more, and then you uh, narrow the pitch just a bit more. But, nonetheless, we've got Bold Eddie out losing the ball. He's fighting. He's, he's doing the most. He's, like, he's really uh, sort of giving up his life for the team. Gomez just looking to whip it in. Savage. Mate, we're on another level. We're playing two different games here, my guy. Like, he's he's just sort of sitting there spectating at times, and you hate to see it. And then he actually catches me on the counter. He catches me cold. So, at this point, I'm kind of not a little bit shook, but I'm just like, all right, lads, get your heads together. I would say it's a half-time team talk, but it's actually the 38th minute where we're starting to get going again. Mertin's giving it to your boy Perisic. Just looking to get away. Van Dijk, a little bit late on him there, my guy. Just got that extra touch, and it turned out to be vital as we stick away another penalty. Perisic stepping up to the spot. Mate, the Atletico Madrid kid actually has, uh, kid has a vibe. I'm not going to lie. Actually has a little bit of a vibe. I'm not going to lie. Like, just seeing that 4 4 2 system, seeing all the chaps in that red and white doing the most. But nonetheless, Rich Arlison just trying to break through. Alexandro just doing enough. And I think what you realize there is Alexandro's actually come down into the middle, and the left mid is basically covering that left back position. So this is obviously one of the great advantages of having the left mid and right mid in that block of four as well as the center mid just kind of dropping back in that defensive phase is you sometimes just end up being able to move your defense like pivot them around type thing and um, you'll still have midfielders covering the gaps that they're leaving. So Paris is just trying to get on through there. David Luiz just trying to get the play going. Uh, we're currently 2-0 up, of course, 75th minute. He's throwing everything at me at this point. You know, he's throwing the kitchen sink in, as they say. I think it is starting to sink in that he's just not going to get past this defense right here as Pogba letting fly. Chesney doing the most once more. 88 in form. I think I got him as a red card. Like, that, that is a sick card. Still last to me. I mean, a lot of these players... Obviously, the team would have been upgraded if I was playing the game much more, but we catch him out there. Like, it's, it's such a banging vibe, especially with a counter-attacking team, where a, a team would just be going at you, and then you just catch him on the counter-attack, and, you know, that's what these defensive teams can do to you. They can soak up the pressure. They can get, you know, a little bit of luck here and there. And then all of a sudden, the pace on the counter catches you, and it's literally just, it literally just reminds me of that vibe where Chelsea played against Liverpool. You know, the old... Um, was it Steven Gerrard's slip? I mean, I hate to say it, man, but it was just kind of vibey, like Denver barring on goal. And then the final goal right at the end, everyone's sitting by. William just like in on goal, completely gone. I don't know. Maybe just park the bus has a vibe in a way, but this isn't necessarily park the bus. I'd just say solid defensive 4-4-2, well-regimented chaps, following the orders, doing the most. And uh, that's what we got to do. So Florenzi. On this right-hand side, just looking to get going once more. Emre Chan tracking all the way. Um, Perisic, you've got to be asking questions of a ref there. I'm not going to lie. Maybe give him a little look or something, but he just he's not responding. He's hes like a, a crashed a crash process or a program sitting on my PC, We're getting the task manager out and wiping him. Gomez is trying to go down this left-hand side. He's taking me out with Cancelo. He's giving it to your boy Ronaldo going at me. I, I mean... Obviously, we've got the pay to win chaps coming in hot. You know, George Best thinking he's all this and that. Well, to be honest, he actually is. He's, I think, 94 rated. Uh, the dribbling stats are just disgusting, to be quite honest with you. But we're looking to drive it with Allen. 
And this is something that I kind of like to do recently. It's kind of, you know... Although I don't like to chip the keeps, or at least attempt to chip the keeps and not even come close to uh, getting it over his head. But the thing is, is that, like, when you just drive, you, you realise that you can really create a chance when you just drive with a midfield. Because the players are making that run. He can't get to you. And then you're in behind. And obviously, he got in behind there with Benzema. Team of the season, no less. Um, to be expected. And um, we do concede a goal in extra time. So... At this point, we are looking to throw everything at him. Alexandro very much sort of spreading the play, getting a couple of little drive backs across. Lozano through the legs. Me, we're straight back in it. Let's go. Lozano has... Oh, the amount of time he's clutched up for me is mad, but we do actually lose on the penalties. A little bit unlucky there, to say the least. I mean, we did actually have a lot more chances in that game, but we can't get lucky all the time. That's just how foot champs is. But nonetheless, chaps and chapets, I have to say this is actually a really enjoyable video to make. Uh, make sure to leave a like and comment down below what tactics you want to see. Yeah, I'll see you chaps and chapets on the next one. Oof. <laughs>